so we brought this Kenzaki down to the beach got a gentle onshore wind but I'm actually going to be comparing it to a more traditional certainly a cheaper Daiwa rod uh, that you can pick up now 150 new she's second hand for about 50 quid and this is the sandstorm rod and this sandstorm rod's also got a casting weight uh, four to eight ounces so we can compare it but I just wanted to show you what you can get for a little bit more money so this is the 200 pounds Kenzaki and we're going to compare how that casts next to uh, the softer sandstorm rod and I'll show you why I think it's worth spending that little bit more so it comes in this bag luminous green yellow tip first thing to notice so it's a relatively thin tip you compare that then you've got the two there this is the new Kenzaki and then this will be the older tip on that sandstorm. It's quite nice there, the Daiwa branding. Uh, two equal sections. That draws the eye, doesn't it? <laughs> that's a really quite slim, streamlined blank. And that's dead straight, that. Uh, there's no, and I can't see any taper on that blank. And it's got one of these sliding reel seats here. So you can obviously use the reel and the butt down position, which I sometimes do with a multiplier. We're going to be using this with a fixed spool today, so I can compare it alongside this continental rod as well. But basically you can just slide that up all the way up to there. I'm not seeing a brand name on the rod rings, uh, but they do look really good quality. These certainly aren't the cheaper versions that you get on something like a hundred pound rod either. A nice texture here as well this is obviously uh, the female side of the blank that you're putting into the male spigot and it's it's like a nice very nice grippy material that as well for either fixed ball or multiplier and i think and that's one of the main reasons because i swap and a lot of people do this they swap between multipliers and fixed ball depending on what sort of fishing they're doing well this rod because of the way uh, the rod rings are size of the rod rings and the spacing you can actually fish this with a multiplier or a fixed ball and i'm quite keen to see how it casts should be able to get a good distance with a four and five ounce lead let's get rid of the labels and the plastics and give it a go yeah so it's a push fit uh, but it's a real tight really nice fit on there on the carbon rod So I just wanted to show where I put the reel seat because you can slide it up and down. Um, I like to have you know a good bit of arm movement there, <laughs> but not too tight, not too long. Um, and it's about there for me. So I'm holding the reel there and my hands on the butt, so like that. Uh, and it does vary depending on the rod. I think this one here, the weight, once that reel's on, is gonna be about there. And then I just mark it's a really nice grip. I'll just mark it with my nail so I know where to put it. So we're going to pair it with the Sony AVX. It's an excellent reel, this one. We did do a review video of it. You can catch that up there, top left of the screen. But we're actually going to use braid. You can, of course, use monofilament as well. We're using a tapered leader, so it starts nice and thin next to the braid and gets thicker and thicker to be able to pendulum cast that 6-ounce lead. see behind me we're on the commercial beach this is the biggest land-based fleet of under 10s and you can see how people still swim in the harbour crazy so I'll just do a basic overhead cast uh, just to get the line wet and we'll see where we go from there five ounce lead even just from that cast it feels like the tip's got a nice little bit of feel to it um, but the rest of the blank's still quite powerful I'm going to do a half swing now, uh, just a little bit more powerful before I really unload. <laughs> that is a really interesting tip. It seems to be doing two things at once. I reckon that will notice a little flat fish like a dab or something at distance. When we refer to the drop, that's the distance between the tip of the rod and where the lead is. And on this rod, I'm going to go 
probably down to about there so just over half the length of the rod I can adjust it accordingly but I'll put the drop about there onto that got a marker I wanted to talk a little bit about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community full of thousands of inspiring classes for creators. I wouldn't do this video if I didn't believe in Skillshare. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads like this one. And they're always creating new premium content so you can stay focused and get lost in your creativity. And I know there's a lot of us that like to film our fishing adventures. Well, I've thoroughly been enjoying Greg Hume's GoPro 8 Beyond Next Level. Another class I'm really enjoying as well is Marcus Brownlee's YouTube success. It's brilliantly set out in terms of the chapters, easy to understand. And I know there's some YouTubers that watch my channel. Uh, this could be something you would thoroughly enjoy as well. So Skillshare is really good. There is a limited offer. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. absolutely flies so we could compare that I mean my cut my casting is not the best I sort of pulled it pulled it left a little bit there but for an average caster like me with sort of a half pendulum that can go that really does fly now it's not as smooth as say this continental rod here you see I've been using this on the pier you can actually see side by side, it's very similar to a continental rod uh, to the Daiwa in terms of the width of the butt section. Uh, 0.996 of an inch, so as good as an inch for the Daiwa. And then the continental rod, these are always slimmer anyway, the continental rods, but that's a 0.897. So not much in it, and yet you can still do a good pendulum swing and push that lead out. You can see the action there, really progressive. I felt uh, during all these casts actually felt in contact with that lead right the way through that swing. That This is with the bait on, uh, but this is the older Daiwa. If you just look at the bend in that, it's more sort of, if you look at that, it's a lot more sort of wallowy. You see it's sort of wobbles a bit on the tip section and you don't get that with the Kanzaki and you don't get that with the Kazaki. Here's an off the ground cast with a continental rod and it's excellent this continental rod but you can see how a lot of that power comes through that tip the longer rod flicks it out rather than punches it out I suppose so three sort of different rods, but I wanted a good idea. You see it, that's like a flick. You can see the two rods side by side there. Grip on the Kenzaki is so much nicer. And having that thinner blank, which is more powerful than the thicker blank. You can see the two of them when they're sat next to each other there, look. Few more inches as well bearing in mind what we've seen already i just wanted a little bit of a laugh really can you tell the difference between the kanzaki and the older diawa both will swing out yeah there really is a difference in the cast i just feel i can give a lot more And I know what's happening with that lead all the way through the cast. I could certainly cast a lot further with it. It's going to be a lot of fun that. I'd like to try in some more sort of tricky conditions. So do you, could you guess <laughs> without looking at the yellow on the rod on the left? 
on the left is a sandblaster. If you see it in slow motion, drop the lead out. As I say, no casting expert here. But the punch through with that new Daiwa is brilliant. It's great. It's going to be a really good fishing rod, this one. So I really do think it's worth spending that little bit more on this Kenzaki. It is the rod that can do everything. You can have a multiplier or a fixed ball. There's a lot more power left in that rod that I'm putting into it at the moment. I do need to improve my pendulum casting. Um, but it's absolutely brilliant. And I'd be really confident fishing over um, rock marks with this as well. You can winch a fish out with this but it's still got that nice sensitive tip that we like here on the south coast for things like the flatfish and feeling those dabs at distance and things like that. So um, yeah, it's my new favorite rod. Um, so thanks very much for watching. Uh, we do have a couple of reviews. We've also got that review on the AVX, which is here. Um, and there's some couple of rod reviews as well. The Synetic, which is a real lighter beach rod, more suited to four ounce and the Surf Blast reel as well that we use, uh, you can watch there as well. So thanks very much for watching, um, we are on the lures as well, I will be bringing you some bass fishing videos, I promise they are coming.